Hello and welcome to this video with me, Rory from Hyper Production. I'm here today with Sonic Academy to bring you a tutorial on how best to layer your kicks. Now, why would you want to layer your kick drums? Well, I'm sure there's been many a scenario before where you've been looking through kick drums to put into your track and you just haven't quite found the right one. You like the low end of one kick and you like the click of another, so why not put them together? But there are a few things that you need to watch out for when you're layering kicks, such as phase cancellation, which we'll show you how to combat in a minute. And there's also two different types of kicks that you want to be looking at as well in order to layer. So I'll dive straight in. So the top one here is a low end kick. If I solo that and play this. So as you can hear, it's not got an awful lot of high end information. A lot of it's quite boomy. And then the bottom one here, we've got a click. So as you can hear, that's quite a clicky kick, if you can uh, get over that tongue twister. So the first thing we're going to do is just check for phase cancellation when we're laying kicks on top of each other. Obviously, before we've done that, we're going to make sure that the kick transients perfectly start on the actual beat. And that's probably the first thing that you want to watch out for. Make sure that they're hitting right on the same time. Because um, you kind of want to make sure that it sounds like a one hit and not sort of like a flammy sound. So like did it and like, you know, like really um, not on top of each other. Which is, again, if you want that desired sound, it's fine. Um, but as I say, for a kick drum, you kind of want to get it sounding like it's just one, one sample. Okay. So we've just checked that we've got them all in line with our grid. And then we're going to, like I mentioned, check for phase cancellation. Now, this will range from door to door. In Logic, we're going to use the gain utility. But uh, Cubase, I think, has a phase inversion setting on it in just within its uh, inspector window. Ableton, I'm not too familiar in, but there are plenty of plugins out there that are free to download. Just download them and you'll be able to find them. So on Logic, go down to Utility, Gain, and we're going to keep it in mono. Okay. Then we're going to play these two kicks together. I'm just going to combine them, put them down by about 4 dB, just so they're not blowing your ears. For those of you that are on headphones. Uh, and then we're just going to play them together and then I'm going to invert the phase of this top one and you'll notice it's going to be a slight change and it'll go slightly thin. That's because then the lower frequencies are then clashing with the clicky kick and then they're obviously going to cancel each other out. If you want to know more information about phase cancelling, there are a ton of tutorials and guides out there and articles. Highly recommend that you read them because it is quite important when you're dealing with samples and other, other sounds and audio in general. So here we go. Okay, so it's quite noticeable, the change in sound there. A lot of the low end, a lot of the thumps kind of gone. It's ending sounding quite thin. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch that off and just bypass that one. I'm going to open up another gain utility plugin on the clicky kick. Again, in mono, because that's what all our kicks are in. And then we're just going to play that and then invert the phase after the first bar. Okay, so again, we can see that there's quite a noticeable difference between them. But this is not going to be so much of an issue because we're going to apply a lot of EQ. We're going to put a high pass filter on one and a low pass filter on the other in terms of EQ. So then the low end kick, as I say, would just like the low end rumble. So I'm going to get my EQ and then I'm just going to take out a lot of the top end because that's because it's got no click. We just want to keep the low end rumble. So I'm just going to have that playing and I'm just going to play around with the EQ to try and get it in the sweet spot. Can solo that quickly and then do it again. Again, we don't want to be doing this too harshly, so I've put it down to an 18 dB shelf. And then we've gone to about where the curve has started to come down to try and match it. Take off a little bit of the high end, but I think around about there will be fine. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to do the same on the clicky kick. Now obviously we're going to have to like tweak this when we hear them both together, but it's quite a good first step 
to then obviously do it like this and just solo each one just to make sure that you're being quite surgical with your with your low cuts <clears throat> or your high cuts. Okay, for the click, you will be better off actually listening to the low end kick. So let's introduce that one and play them both together and then try and find that sweet spot. Okay, I think about there is about good actually. And then obviously when you're laying multiple sounds on separate channels, you probably want to bust them to a single channel just for ease of use within your mixer and obviously within your arrangement window. And then you can process the kick drum from there quite easily. So then we're going to open up our mixer window here. We're going to highlight both of these and then we're going to send them off to bus one. We're going to cancel the outputs by holding, clicking and dragging and clicking on no output. And then we're going to label this one kick. And then we're going to highlight these two again hold down alt and then click that and it will bring it up to unity gain so you're sending off the full amount of signal post fader to the auxiliary channel just if you need to check that you're doing it post fader if you click on these two up and down arrows here hold it and it will tell you there so it's doing a post pan so we actually want to do it post fader so we're doing that and then that's it so because they're both highlighted just doing one will action the other at the same time so then let's have a listen to that if you want to find your auxiliaries on your actual arrangement window, you just click on read click like that. So you have to get the drop down because if you press on this little standby button here, it won't do it. And then you've got it in your window here so we can get rid of that. And then we can easily see in our inspector window where to add certain effects and things like that. So if we solo that and then take out these two. And then we can apply things like compression to add that extra bit of bump. So for this, I'm going to use the Pro C2 from Fab Filter, And then we're just probably going to go, just as a good basis to start with, probably go for a punchy rock kick. Probably something a little more subtle than that. Let's go on Subtle Control Jazz. So again, it just nicely tidies up the lower end frequencies, just keeps it nice and tight. And the main aim is that we do want it to sound like one sample. So doing this way, tying it up, gluing it together with a bit of compression will do that perfectly. And then the more you do this throughout separate tracks, you'll then start building up a bit of an arsenal of samples that you've made and then you'll add that extra bit of uniqueness to your music. So that's probably another prime reason as to why you'd want to do this as well. So I think that concludes it for this tutorial today. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.